Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 4 Training Part 25. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our spark timing. We're going to have a lot to learn, so let's get started. Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our spark timing we're going to be working with in our Gen 4 ECMs. So our spark timing is going to be when we ignite the fuel and air mixture in relation to our piston travel on our compression stroke. If we have a higher number, we're going to be igniting the fuel and air mixture sooner as the piston's coming up to top dead center. And if we have a lower number, closer to zero, we're going to be igniting that mixture closer to the piston being at top dead center or even traveling past top dead center. So we're going to go over how the ECU is going to be calculating our spark timing. We're going to find it's going to be based on our spark air mass, which is going to be based on the cylinder air mass, as well as our engine RPM. We're going to have two tables to deal with. We have a low and high octane table. We're going to go cover how that works, how it's going to be calculated, and what you need to know in jumping into our VCM scanner so we can log our ignition timing and be able to track what's going on while we're doing our tuning. Without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at our spark timing in our GM Gen 4 ECMs. So what I have open right now is going to be a 2010 Chevy Camaro E38. So what we find and what we learn in this video here with this particular operating system and ECM will apply to all of the other Gen 4 families of ECUs and operating systems. So let's jump in here to our engine. Let's move across here from general all the way over here to spark. And let's move into advanced. Now in an advanced section here, this is going to be where we have our actual spark timing that's going to be delivered our, to our engine coming from. Now we have a whole lot of tables here to deal with, but we're only going to be taking a look at the base or the core tables right now in this video. Then in the upcoming videos, we're going to start to add some more of the complexity here with the spark timing tables so we make more sense of what's going on and how this is going to be working in our ECU. So let's jump into our section right here. We're just going to be taking a look at our base tables here in our video. And then again, we're going to be looking at all the other correction tables later on. Now looking here in our base, we find we have two tables. We have a high and low octane table. We also find we have two tables here for spark timing based on our displacement on demand. So if our engine has displacement on demand, we might be using these tables here for our spark timing source. Or if we're outside of our displacement on demand, we're going to be going into our main tables here for high and low octane. Now if your engine has uh, displacement on demand, then you're going to have to know what the status is if you're going to be tuning with it. You can log it in your VCM scanner to see if that displacement on demand is kicking on or off. Um, if you don't have displacement on demand, you might find that the tables are populated in your file here. And in that case, you can just simply ignore them um, and not change any of the values in there. You're only going to be sourcing then your high and low octane tables. Now, if you have an engine that is going to have a displacement on demand, but you've put a cam in that deletes it, you're going to be turning off the displacement on demand, which then will bypass these two tables. We don't have to modify anything in the table, and then we'll find that we're just operating here on our high and low octane table. So it's pretty simple how it works. Now the 